Let's talk about a respectful and cooperative approach to cities of the future. Architecture and automobiles are bound together in a relationship that is full of tension and changes. In the last 100 years, the car has had a bigger impact on cities worldwide than anything else. As an example, I would like to cite the Weissenhof estate, built in Stuttgart in 1927 under the direction of Le Corbusier. If you call to mind an image of the estate, Le Corbusier's architecture is closely connected to the car and the fashion of the time. Architecture and mobility were having a kind of love affair. As we all know, this love affair has entered a crisis over the years, and when we look at the 60s, 70s, and 80s of our century, with the emergence of the oil crisis and infrastructure problems in the city, then it is clear that we are faced with new challenges today. One of them being the solution of mobility in high-dense urban spaces and the impossibility to create sustainable systems. But is this really an impossibility? Do we want to engage in a discussion that is predetermined by threatening scenarios of industries and societies? Of course, the thought that in 2050, approximately 7 billion of the anticipated 9.3 billion people will live in cities can create an uneasy feeling as it comes with a set of admittedly scary and immediate questions. Hyperurbanization is usually connected to problems such as overpopulation, shortage of resources, environmental issues, gridlock, and so on. Quite frankly, these concerns are to be taken very seriously. But at the same time, we also have to admit that we don't know what it will mean to live in these environments. All that we know is that we have parameters of our, our current life and that they will change drastically. And because we know that, we can also assume that we will need a radical rethinking and defining of urban space. That can be scary and at the same time holds an incredible potential. Just think about it, as Mark Wigley said, we will actually have a lot more of the great potential we are already taking advantage of in cities. Let's continue his thought and play with the following scenario. What if we approach the megacity from a different point of view? and identified its incredible potential to serve as the best living space humans could create for themselves. What if he used his slogan, we love cities, to celebrate the exponential more of the capital the city offers us today? What if we started looking at the city as the most productive and most complex concentration of shared resources? Really, think about it. Cities are the most adaptive systems in that they grow and accelerate human potential. In that sense, we need to redefine urbanism and put on different glasses to identify methods to understand the interstate inner workings and relations that are being created in order to ensure a proper space appropriation to human needs. One of these human needs, apart from shelter and food, is the de desire to be mobile. The first thing we will find in the, that Corbusier's principle of designing architecture with a car in mind does no longer work. The car does no longer shape the city but rather the city shapes the car and it is our next big challenge. We have to, lo to listen closely to the city and understand its need to find an appropriate response in urban planning. In other words, we have to dissolve the antagonism between urbanism and mobility and find ways to balance the relationship between the two. In that endeavor, an open dialogue between architects, city planners, mobility providers, citizens, and other stakeholders is key and it is one of our main tasks as, at Starpark to function as mediator and curator in this process.